Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about urinary tract calculi. So urinary tract calculus is defined as a crystal deposit within the urinary tract and it tends to present with severe loin to groin pain when the stone gets stuck somewhere along the urinary tract. There are a few different types of stone to be aware of, the most common of which is calcium oxalate but there are a few others as well such as magnesium ammonium phosphate also known as struvite urate and cysteine. So when investigating a patient with suspected urinary tract calculi, usually the first thing that's done just because it's a bedside test is a urine dipstick, which is very likely to show hematuria. The gold standard investigation, however, is a non-contrast CTKUB, which allows visualization of the stone within the urinary tract. And there are a few other investigations as well, which do provide useful clinical information such as usernees, which allows you to assess whether there's been any compromise in renal function. The management of urinary tract calculi depends largely on the clinical state of the patient and also the size of the stone. So if the patient has features of sepsis and has an obstructed urinary tract, they need the system to be decompressed urgently, and that's usually achieved with a nephrostomy, which I'll talk about in a moment. If there is no infection, then the management depends largely on the size of the stone itself. So if the diameter is less than 5 millimeters, it's quite likely to pass spontaneously. And it's also recommended that the stone is retained for analysis, just because it can give some hints as to whether there's any underlying causes that may predispose the patient to developing stones. If the stone is larger than 5 millimeters in diameter, then an intervention is usually indicated. And that may come in a number of different forms. So let's talk about each of these terms in turn, and it can be better understood by breaking down the terms themselves. So ureteral suggests that it's through the ureter, scopic suggests that there's a camera involved, litho means stone, and tripsy means crushing that stone into smaller pieces that can then pass through the urinary tract. So this involves passing a fine camera via the urethra and the bladder into the ureter, and breaking down the stone, usually using laser technology. So moving on to extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Extra means outside, corporeal means the body, shockwave means ultrasound, and lithotripsy means crushing the stone. So this is a non-invasive technique that uses ultrasound technology directed at the stone to shake it into smaller pieces, which can then pass through the bladder and through the urethra. Moving on to percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Percutaneous means that it's through the skin. Nephro suggests it involves the kidney as opposed to the ureter. Lith means stone and otomy means cutting the stone out. So percutaneous nephrolithotomy is an approach in which you go via the skin into the kidney to extract a stone that is lodged within the kidney. So nephrostomy is done in an emergency circumstance when you have an infected and obstructed system. So assessment of the patient will likely reveal an AKI and sepsis. So it requires urgent decompression. And as the name suggests, it involves creating an opening into the kidney. So it involves passing a tube via the skin into the renal pelvis so that the urine that has accumulated and backlogged into the kidney can be drained.